Dr. Rodney Mackert from the Georgia Medical College, I believe. Uh, he published a paper with another individual and they estimated the amount of mercury coming off of an amalgam filling by looking at the amount that's in the urine. The first thing you have to understand is over 90% of the mercury excreted from the body goes out fecally. It does, I mean, you're, so you're looking at a minor excretory pathway when you look at the urine and you cannot look at the urine, the amount in the urine and say this is a measure of the total amount of mercury going out. 90% goes out fecally. So first of all, his, uh, his estimation has got to be over tenfold off by just using the urine mercury level as a measurement of this. The second thing that's bad about that is that if you look even at the children's amalgam trial where they looked at the mercury level in the urine of boys and girls at an orphanage in Lisbon, Portugal, where they put in amalgam fillings or composite non-mercury non containing fillings in their mouths, uh, you see that the boys put out less than half the uh, amount of mercury as the girls at their peak values and when you uh, had them in place for some period of time the boys were putting out almost none and this is a testosterone versus estrogen level. Females excrete mercury much better than males and this is backed up by all kinds of sensible studies such as if you put mercury uh, in the water of a mixed gender uh, set of rats the fem I mean, the males will all be dead before the first female shows signs of sickness. Females handle mercury toxicity better than males. Uh, the, the other aspect of that is that when he did the estimation, I, I, I mean, I don't know what kind of math he used. He said something like, you have to have uh, 300 amalgam or 600 amalgams to reach a level that he thought would uh, be measurable and toxic. And that is, it's just a... Uh, uh, Scientifically, his study and his report was ridiculous. I mean, there is absolutely no doubt. We have taken single amalgam fillings, placed them, uh, made where we know in a cylindrical form so we know the weight and the surface area of that amalgam filling. We did this to over 90 fillings that were made by dentists and shipped back to me, nine different dentists. And we measured the amount of mercury that came off of a cylindrical filling of known weight and known surface area sitting in distilled water at room temperature where there's no, no acidity like you have in your mouth that would encourage it to come out, no sulfur compounds like we have in our mouth that would make it come out, no heat, no grinding, and no uh, 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 galvanism, which all would increase the amount. This would be the minimum amount that would just come out sitting quietly in a test tube. And the amounts that we came up with were 166 to over 600 times higher than what he estimated. And this is the trick they use. They don't want to be caught in a liar, so they say, we estimate this. The FDA is good at estimating, and this is what I call weasel words. You can estimate it and say, well, you know, how many beers did you have? Well, I estimate I had two last night, and you're drunk, totally soused. Well, that's what they're doing. And he's, his estimate, uh, estimation is used by the FDA and presented uh, to the uh, uh, FDA as proof, and they buy it. I can measure it. They could measure it. They absolutely, if they wanted to prove me wrong, that my values were wrong, could repeat my experiment and say how much comes out. Why don't they? It's less than $10,000. That's nothing. They, they pay more than that for him to come and uh, testify for one day. So the ADA or the people who manufacture dental amalgams could repeat our experiments and tell everybody how wrong we are but they don't do that. They just sit on and they live with the estimate because they know the FDA, I mean the people at the FDA really I, I think are unethical. They're sitting there and they're buying estimations by people who make money about the safety of their product. And they say, well we don't use the precautionary principle in evaluating amalgam fillings. Yet if you're on the other side, like with the compound that I'm trying to you know, get approved for treating people, and, and I, ha I have to prove without a doubt that this compound wouldn't cause any medical problem to these people. And I agree with that reproach. I think the FDA should check compounds like mine if you're going to use it for a long period of time to see how toxic or non-toxic it is. But why don't they do that with the dental amalgam? Why doesn't the FDA make the manufacturers of dental amalgams test and make amalgams and show that they don't release mercury? Or how much mercury do they release sitting quietly? And what I can tell you, it's very, very high, 
It's very toxic, and it corresponds to what people in other countries, like the Swedes and the Norwegians and the Finns, have measured in the fecal material of people who have amalgam fillings. I mean, it goes up dramatically high with existing amalgam fillings in the person. You take those amalgam fillings out, and the amount drops in their fecal material. So it's not going into them from fish. And there's all this obfuscation that comes out from the FDA and the ADA that is really just nothing more than uh, deceiving the American public of the dangers of amalgam fillings.